Okay. Uh, this is going to be quite a long talk, and I, have, uh, I don't have much time, so I'm going to start uh, right now. Uh, first, let me apologize. As you can obviously see, I, I have a little code, so I'm going to do quick stops to cough, and I'll probably, I promise to turn the microphone off if I can. Uh, anyway, I'm, I'm here to talk about EXT4 and the casing sensitive feature that we implemented on it. My name is Gabriel, I work for Collabora. And well, let's go. Uh, so first, uh, what is a casing sensitive file system and why we want that? Basically, casing sensitive is the ability to look up for files and ignore the case. So all, all of these files that you are seeing here, slash temp, slash hello in lowercase, slash temp hello in, in uppercase, or a mixed, uh, a mixed form of that, they all should resolve to the same file. And then you bring this question to me, why? Why do we want this? Well, Linux has worked very well for the past 20 something years without case insensitive. Unix doesn't have case insensitive. All the other operating systems who try to do it ran into several, some troubles. Well, the reason why we want to do this is because there are real world use cases. In particular, two that really matter to me. The first one is when we want to bring applications from the Windows world. Very huge applications which carry dozens or of thousands of files. They all were written with disregard of case and building these applications in Linux is a pain. Also, uh, I really care about the gaming industry and Wine and Proton have problems when they are trying to run games that are loading uh, a lot of textures and they need to be real quick doing, real fast doing it. And all this code was, was programmed using casing, considering a casing sensitive file system. Well, you can solve that in user space, but then you don't have the performance necessary to run a AAA game on Linux. And finally, I have a very important use case, which is Android. The Android developers decided to expose and casing sensitive API for their for application developers. And now they need, they need to provide backward compatibility for that API. And uh, doing that outside of the file system itself is either racy, as they discovered by doing SD card FS, or has very low performance. Uh, but there are other reasons why we want casing sensitivity, because that's, why, that's how real languages work. When I'm talking to you guys, it doesn't really matter if I'm thinking lowercase or uppercase, there is no such thing. Well, we could say that uppercase is actually screaming, but that is some internet stuff, it's not real, it's not real languages. So when I'm using my system, I don't want to remember if my file was created in lowercase or uppercase, I just want to find my file. And uh, there is another reason, another very important reason. There is much more to the world than just the English language. And we are not good at handling these special characters like the Cedilha in Portuguese or the asset, which is that little beta that comes from German. Uh, that letter in particular is quite funny because in lowercase it's actually SS. And, then you, and when you write your word, your word in uppercase, it's this beta, which they call asset. So if I'm searching for a file and I don't know German and the file is written in one way, I'm gonna have a hard time looking for it. And people complain a lot because, well, the Unix philosophy is about simplicity, we want the least surprise. Well, I could argue that uh, the least surprise is actually not having to know all the idiosyncrasies of languages when you are searching for a file. The Unix philosophy doesn't actually go against the idea of casing sensitive. So basically, how do we implement that? That's easy peasy, right? Uh, for those who program, you have your libc uh, str case compare, and that solves everything. It's not exactly like that. Well, in Linux, file systems, uh, sorry, file systems see file names as opaque byte sequences. So it's just a stream of bytes that is no terminated. It can it can be any byte possible except for the forward slash and the new byte character. Uh, what is the uppercase of a byte? It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Upper and lower case are linguistic terms. So they only make sense when you define 
a language when you define an encoding for and when you define an encoding for your language. So now we have to assign meaning for all those, those bytes. Well, we usually assign ASCII. So A is equal 61 in X and etc. But that is not enough for the world. That is really good for English speakers, but there is more to the world than just that. So we need to we need something else. We need better encoding. We need we actually need Unicode support. And doing this in file systems bring a lot of other issues. So what happens now when my, when I have files with two names that only differ by case. So I have two files that are blind uppercase, blind lowercase. If I have a, an ext4 file system, a simple one, well, those are two different files, but now we want to see them as the same. So if I take a file system that is case sensitive and make it case insensitive, I might get into this situation where, file, where files collide and then I cannot access them anymore. And the last issue is performance. Well, comparing two byte sequences to verify if they are the same is very easy. You just do a for loop and do the comparison byte per byte or word per word if you want to be fancy. When you are dealing with Unicode, it's not that easy. You have multiple ways to write the same string and you need to handle all that. And the last question is what are the right semantics for this? What is the right granularity that I want my file system to work on? Is, it, is, the file, is the entire file system going to be case insensitive or just a directory? Can I do an entire file system case insensitive? I don't know. What about data preserving? What I write on the disk, is it going to be the lowercase version to make lookups faster? Is it going to be exactly what the application wanted to write? These are the kind of semantics that we needed to discover. And there is also the question, what if you get it wrong, like Apple did in 2017 when they released this new, super new, fancy file system called APFS for the MacBooks? Well, they released this file system in 2017, and they made the decision of doing the normalization, which is an operation you do on file names. It wouldn't be done on the file system anymore. It would be done on user space uh, differently from what was done in, in, XFS, in HFS beforehand. Uh, and then they released uh, iOS 10.3 with that implementation, and all the and all the iOS applications stopped to work because some applications uh, assumed that what they they had written on disk is what would be fetched. Some applications didn't know you were doing normalization in user space. Everything start, started to crash. And uh, well, I work on the kernel. I don't want people to. I don't want LWN to write a, an article about me how I broke things up. So I really wanted to get this wrong in the first place, this right in the first place. But some people may ask, well, is this a kernel problem? Why not do it in user space? It's possible to do. Apple tried to do it, didn't do it, but it's possible if you do it right. But performance is very important, and there is no way I'm going to explain why you can do this in user space with the current Linux infrastructure and get performance at the same time. I also care a lot about non-English speakers because, well, English is not my native language, so ASCII is not enough for me. I want something that can be used by everyone. And I need to consider these strange cases, like the asset in German. So I want real Unicode. I don't want just ASCII. I don't want ASCII 2 and some code pages. I want UTF-8. And, and I need to make it future-proof. I want the Unicode people to release their next version of Unicode six months from now. Uh, they do releases every six months, and I want to be able to apply that to the kernel very quickly so everyone can have their latest emojis. So uh, I started by teaching the kernel Unicode. How do you teach Linux Unicode? Well, basically just a quick overview of Unicode. It's composed by code points which is our unit of, of operation. So we are not talking about characters, we are talking about code points. They are very similar to characters, but they have some caveats. So they can be multibyte. Basically, A is 0061, which is actually just 661. Six, you can see that that is compatible with ASCII, but you can have characters that are four bytes long, for instance. And you have over 100,000 code points already assigned in Unicode, but, you can, but the Unicode folks can go up to millions. So we need a lookup in this table to, be, to have real good performance. We need to, do, to be able to do some operations. Like, for instance, in Unicode, you have this character, A with a tiled, which can be written as that character or a composition of two characters, A composed with the tiled character. You have also this very specific uh, linguistic structure, which is called a ligature, 
where you can combine a few letters in a language and that becomes a single letter. So Unicode, you have a single letter that is called FFI ligature. And you have another ligature that is called FF. And you have the letter F. So if you want to write the word office in English, you have three ways to do it. You can write O, F, F, I, C, -E, or, you can write, or you can use the FF ligature. You write O, F, F, then the letter I, C, -E, or you can use the FFI ligature, O, F, F, I, C, E. And all those need to match to the same operation, to the same file. And then there is the question, how do we actually encode these things? Uh, Unicode refers to characters, not to the encoding itself. We could choose between UTF-8, UTF-16, UTF-32. And that is not as an obvious choice as you may think. Well, the internet goes on UTF-8. Okay, we are English speakers. But actually, UTF-8 is not great for every script, uh, for every set of languages in the world. On Western languages, to represent their characters in UTF-8, you actually spend four bytes while to write the English alphabet, you only use one byte, which means that a, fi a text file in a language like Chinese ends up being almost four times larger than a text file written in English in UTF-8. And this is not quite fair. So, but still, just, uh, just a detail, no matter how I, 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 want, to, I want to fix that, uh, what I did was I added support for us to be able to implement other UTF uh, encodings and other encodings that are used in other parts of the world, but my customer is American, so I implemented UTF-8. Uh, I need to define a few operations just for us to go on here. The first operation is called normalization, and it allows you to get any, any way to write a specific sequence, A tiled or A plus tiled or tiled plus A, and mash them to the same character. So you basically take a string that is unnormalized, normalize it, and then they all match if they are the same character. The second operation uh, that we can talk about is case fold, which is basically normalization, but, but for case. So in this operation, a lowercase would match a uppercase. And what I really want to do is normalization plus case fold. So a with an accent written as a accent accent plus A, or A plus accent, or the lowercase and uppercase version of that, they would all match. Now, there are two ways to normalize in Unicode. The first one is the canonical, and the second one is called compatibility normalizations. Which one to pick? Well, let's, let's see. The K normalization, the compatibility normalization, it gives us some, res some very strange results. Like 2 to the power of 5, it says it's the same thing as 25, because it doesn't care about the semantic meaning. It cares about spe the specific characters. So if I created a file called 2 to the power of 5 in my XT4 file systems and then looked up for a file for the file 25, I would have that, which is obviously really crazy. My second alternative would be to use the canonical normalization, which has more linguistic meaning, but it doesn't consider stuff like ligatures. So remember the office ligatures I mentioned about? FFI is a ligature, FF is another ligature, and then you have the letter F. Well, with the canonical normalization, office written in one way and office written in the other way, they wouldn't match. So none of these are ideals. So I went to other file systems who already implement this, NTFS, for instance, APFS, the Apple file system, HFS, to see what the hell are they doing. And turns out, everyone does it differently. So NTFS, NFS, they both use the C form. Uh, HFS uses the K form. APFS does something amazing. They use the K form in some cases. And in other cases, they use a version of the C form. And this is not documented anywhere. So we discussed a lot, and we went with the C form for now. But as I mentioned, we want this to be future-proof, so this is always all the information about what we are doing is stored in the super block of the file system in case we want to modify it later, but we believe we got it right, or as right as we could. Uh, and then we implemented a, a, a library in the kernel that provides an API to abstract all of this from file system developers. 
Basically, it's a high-level API abstracting all the encoding details and the versioning details of the shard set, uh, allowing us, allowing the user file system to just say, I want this encoding, I want this shard set with this functionalities. For instance, I want the K normalization or the C normalization. For now, we only support C. And then they, they are able to provide us with strings, and we spit back the case folded version or, the, or perform comparisons as they need. This is a high-level API which implements fun functionalities like STR compare, the Unicode equivalent, uh, STR case compare, the Unicode equivalent. Uh, it implements normalization, it implements case fold directly to be used by the file systems. So how do we store all this information in, in the kernel? Remember that we need to store this huge table in the kernel, and this, it cannot be stored as a simple table because we need to do very fast lookups on it. So basically, we auto-generate this data from the UCD files, which is the Unicode database files that are published by the Unicode consortium. And then at build time, we generate a digital tree that uh, turns out into a big binary blob that gets uh, linked into a module in the kernel. And then we perform lookups in this digital tree, which is actually a forest. Uh, we have several trees, one for each version of Unicode, uh, looking for UTF data. And the key for looking up in this tree is the encoding itself. So it's very cheap for us to figure out if a character exists or not, or if it's an invalid character. And on the leaves of this tree, we have, inf we have the information already decomposed of what is the case fold version and what is the normalized version of this character. So now, converting a string becomes as easy as performing several lookups for each code point in this, in this table. And the entry of this tree and the, each tree in the forest give us the version of where this character was introduced. Why is this important? Because Unicode does not assign all the code points available. Some code points are still empty and they can be assigned in the future. And they can be assigned a new normalization in the future. Which means that if you go on your ext4 file system and create a file which uses one of these unassigned code points, and in the future Unicode decides that they want to assign that code point to a character that decomposes to another char character, and by accident you have another file in your file system that has that other character, then those files would start to collide in the future. So we always need to store the version where those, that file system was created and stick with it, or perform some operation to update all the file names in a file system, which is not quite trivial to do online. Um, the way we assemble it, I'm not going to go over uh, through it, but it's basically done at build time. It, it takes a few seconds to do it, so I didn't want to add it to the, to the normal build flow because I didn't want to piss, all, piss off all the other kernel developers. This is only, we only build this if you set a specific flag in the, in the, during kbuild to generate it. Uh, and, I, and I, as the Unicode maintainer, I do it every six months when the new Unicode version is released. So basically, this is done by, we walk through the entire database, assemble, calculate the normalizations uh, beforehand, and then generate the tree with all the information already there. Uh, this means that we have, we can perform character lookup by just traversing the tree from the root until the leaf, which means that the cost of the performing lookups depending on the encoding length. So once again, performing English lookups is a bit cheaper because the English alphabet is, is all comprised, can all be described with single byte Unicode code points, but it's harder for Western languages. But still, the way that the Unicode subsystem is implemented in the kernel allows you to add plugins, add another encoding if you care about it. I'm not going to do it. Uh, and then, as I mentioned, we provide this higher level operation so the kernel, the file system can just ask, give me a Unicode map for UTF-8 12.1, and then it can do uh, STR and compares by passing the map, the string one, string two, and you know if those string matches or not. So implementing support for this in new file systems becomes a bit easier. The basic idea for ext4, we store the encode information in the super block, and we make each directory decide if they want to be per, if they want to be case insensitive or not. We can do it on the entire file system by setting the flag on the, on the root I node. But if you do it on your rootfs, you're going to have trouble booting your Linux because we have libraries in slash user slash lib that only 
differ by case. So we really don't want to do that in your root file system. So the plan is whoever is going to use this feature, they can create their file system with the case insensitive flag, or which is written in the super block, your file system is still case sensitive, then you go per a node and change an inode attribute that tells whether that file will be case insensitive or not. And then on the implementation side, we could just, well, str comp now is UCD str case compared for those cases. Uh, we still need to handle a few details. So for instance, the XC4 for very large, for large directories, they do an optimization. They, they don't perform linear searches. They go through an, uh, basically a multi-level hash tree. And now, and they, the hash is based on the name of the file. So, but the hash of uh, the name of the file as it was created. So now we need to perform the hash over the normalization, which is pretty straightforward to do. Now our new hash is based on the normalization plus case fold version of that name. Uh, but that also means that until now, our files, we didn't have to do any changes in our disk except for, for writing the encoding on the super block, which is trivial to do. Now we actually do changes on, on the layout of our disk. So now if you are enabling case fold on your disk, you need to do an update you need to update it offline. Uh, f with regards to performance, we need to, we had, to, we fixed the cache the same way. Uh, we implemented two, two hooks, one that uh, will hash using the normalized version and one which compare using the, the, K, the Unicode uh, functionalities. This is something that could be improved, could be extended in VFS, so the code is shared with every file system that wants to implement this feature in the future. Uh, I want to implement it for ButterFS, and I know, and I had some discussion with the XFS people already to have it there. So before that, I'll probably be migrating some of this dcache code to VFS. Uh, but there are some troubles with what I'm doing right now since I'm using the compare and the hash in the VFS. Uh, and this can only be assigned at, uh, I, at uh, the dentry creation time. Uh, we are breaking over LayFS with this feature. This is something that uh, every feature using these hooks go through. I know that the FS script, uh, the per directory encryption guys, uh, faced. And I think this is something that we need to fix in the, in the VFS itself. Also, uh, with this functionality, I cannot trust negative dentries anymore in all cases, which kind of sucks because according to this guy, uh, negative dentries are quite important for performance. He made a very good point of that. Uh, but they don't really work all the time anymore. For instance, if you create a file in a case insensitive directory and create it uppercase and then remove that, uh, that file, you have the negative dentry for the uppercase version. Then if you make the directory case insensitive and create a lowercase version, we are gonna reuse the, we might reuse the negative entry, which is a uppercase. And this means that the file, the new file in the, case, in, the low, in the lowercase version would be created as the uppercase version, which is not disk preserving anymore. It's a bit of a trouble to fix this in the, in the VFS layer. So what the XFS guys did when they supported something similar back in the day was let's just disallow uh, negative entries for the entire file system when using that feature they had. This is the same thing I did in the XD4, but in truth it's actually a bad idea more for the XD4 than for XFS because the XFS guys do other tricks in their, on their side that the XD4 can't. So they don't rely as much on negative entries as we do. So this is something I'm working on to provide a proper fix. This would be to invalidate when changing from negative entry to positive. Turns out it's a bit tricky to do that. Uh, but uh, this, I have a patch the ready for this already. Uh, it's just not available in 5.2, which is when this, the, the code went upstream. There's also some trouble with FS script lookup. Uh, because FS script performs uh, an optimization in which they don't uh, decrypt all file names, they encrypt the file name you're looking for and use that as the hash to go to the file you want to search. Well, we cannot do, do this anymore because then we would no, need to know beforehand what is the exact case version of the file that we encrypted. Uh, and the solution to, well, let's just normalize and use the normalization to find the file is not useful here because 
the, the name that is stored is also is actually an encrypted version of the file name. Uh, and if, if we change the hash, we are also changing the file name, which makes it, again, not disk preserving. So I don't have a good solution for this to make it uh, perform well on encrypted directories. Uh, there is one solution which would be, okay, let's just decrypt everything and walk through that, but that sucks with performance. Um, there is another solution that I was working on but is broken, so I'm not going to uh, go through that in the interest of time because I would like to go through questions. And well, the current status that we have for this is that we have the Unicode subsystem, the UTF database, and the ext4 support merged into 5.2. Into 5.3, we started caching the normalized and case folded version inside the ext4, which allow us to get some very good speed ups in the lookup. Uh, we have a work in progress to make FScript support working, which has been taken over by the Google guys. They are really interested in having this for Android. Uh, I have a work in progress to split the UTFA database as a module so you can, you can avoid loading that huge blob before, uh, unless you really want a case insensitive file system. And I'm also working trying to fix overlay FS and avoid using the compare, the hash, and the revalidate for FScript so all of us can benefit from overlay FS. And some of the stuff that I really want to do, I want to put some of this stuff in VFS so, we can, so other file systems can benefit of it. I want more file systems to support the case insensitive feature because my customer needs that. And I also allow, want to allow some dynamic changes of the ops after they are actually create, after they are uh, initialized and when they are positive, which would allow us to solve once and for all the cases where, where overlay of S wants to register hooks and, someone, uh, and some other feature already registered it. Well, that's what I had for you guys. I know it went real quick, but I wanted to open a few minutes for questions. Uh, I don't know if you can get a microphone, but... Okay. This is something that is still open and, and under design. We discussed this during LSFMM. So what we want to do is we want the, the file system to provide a, an attribute indicating that it supports case insensitive and supports it and support it on the server side. This is for Samba. I don't know what the NFS guys are planning to do. But this is still under design. Nothing is supported. We don't support export files yet. Anyone else? Oh, okay. Uh, so, thank you. Thank you all for coming. <laughs>